So you ready to uh, do a little help and help me out and yeah. do a little help, help, help? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, guys, this is probably the most important section of the entire day. And it may not even seem like it at first, but I swear to God that this is the most important thing. And here's why it's so important. When you go to PowerShell, you're going to stare at that console and go, now what do I do? Yeah. This is the answer. So, Kierkegaard card called that the dizziness of freedom. You look at that prompt and you can do anything. And you're like, <laughs> uh, what do I do? And that is that a lot of it, it, it affects all of us. And a lot of us, you know, you, you get past that with what we're going to do now. Yeah, exactly. The help system. Um, but I think for a lot of folks, I see it all the time that, okay, it made sense when you were doing it, but now I'm staring at that console and I just don't know what to do. Yep. And I don't know where to go. And they create a solution for you. This is a beautiful solution. So what we're going to start off with is um, looking at the help system, showing you how to get it updated. And this is actually a fascinating feature in V3. Remember I was saying you're going to want to be using V3, and this is going to be one of them. The most important thing is the discoverability that the help system provides you. Basically, it is your, it is your bang for PowerShell. It, is your, it, is, it is answers all of your needs and all of your questions. And also, we're going to uh, show you how to read syntax and so forth. So let's get started with the help stuff. And here in about 10 minutes, we'll take a break, and then we'll come back in and look at all the syntax and, and start getting into it. So first of all, why you need help? Well, I just want to go to bullet number two right yeah, off. exactly. Can, can, can we talk about this? I don't, I'm a smart guy, but yeah. I'm not smart enough to just know everything. Absolutely. So tell me what the idea here is. Yeah, so one of my jokes, although it's actually true, is that uh, PowerShell is such a great product because I'm such a deeply flawed human. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, I'm a de It's true. I'm a deeply flawed human, <laughs> and I was in a position to say, hey, let's build a tool that helps me. Right. right? So concretely, you know, I, I can't remember all that stuff either. I'm a terrible typist, uh, et cetera. So you'll see there's a ton of stuff in PowerShell that helps for those things. So it really is a goal to not be able to memorize things. Actually, there's a great story. Uh, they recently did a study of Unix admins and came out with this report. And I was really amused by this because basically about 25, 30 years ago, they had done exactly the same study and produced exactly the same results. Results. And here's what they did. They took a bunch of uh, beginner Unix admins and expert Unix admins. And they said, hey, here's a test. If you wanted to do this, how do you do it? A written test. And what was interesting was that there, when you scored these, uh, there wasn't very much of a difference between the expert Unix admins and the beginning of Unix admins. And so then it's like, oh, why are we paying these experts so much money? You know, they can't uh, uh, objectively they're not that much better than just some beginner, right? <laughs> and so then, so then they said, okay, well now let's put them in front of a machine and give them a set of tasks. And what you saw was this huge difference in performance, that the experts were able to perform amazing things that the beginners struggled with. And the conclusion was that what expert Unix guys are great at is not knowing things, but in figuring things out. Okay, and so that's the deal. This is not about you sitting there saying, hey, um, it should work this way, right? No, 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 that's not the deal. The deal is, hey, let me figure out how to do things. And so that's what we're, it's all about. What you're going to learn is a schema, right? You're going to learn a set of things. You're going to learn how to learn, and then you're going to use those techniques over and over again. And that's why once you learn how to use PowerShell and you're managing, say, Exchange, then when someone says, oh, we got this link server, it's like, well, let me have at it. And you'll be able to go, and you'll be able to learn and learn and learn and just figure stuff out. So basically what you're telling me is, is that the first time I walked up to a Unix guy and I said, hey, how'd you do that? And he turned around and, and usually barked, uh, rah, rah, uh, barked at me going, RTFM. Yeah. He was actually trying to educate me. He wasn't just being a terrible person. No, both. Oh, okay. He's being both. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, and this is really the moral of the story, is you're not going to be able to memorize stuff. Guys, no. we, you know, PowerShell V2 had like 236 core commandlets. Mm. Okay, I might be able to memorize those, but here's the deal. When you start working with products, you know, Exchange has, depending on your version of Exchange, has between 535 and 610 commandlets. You've got 500 and some odd commandlets for SharePoint. You've got 100 and some odd commandlets for Active Directory. In Server 2012, you have 
thousands of commandlets yeah, now. Thousands. Yep. There's no way to memorize them. So what they did is they created a help system. Now, before you go, oh no, not another help system. Yeah. <laughs> because I know if you've, and I'm, I'm not. Okay, maybe I am. If you've used the help system in 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 a particular product before and have found it unuseful, well, just remember. It wasn't spent a lot of time on. This was spent a lot of time on by people who wanted you to be successful and knew that the only way that you're going to be successful is to have a great help system. We, all of us, use this every single day. And I want to point out, that as Jeffrey was saying, it's about using the help system, <coughs> reading and comprehending it, and then figuring it out. We're IT pros. That's what we do. We figure things out. This is actually fun when you get start working with it. But one of the challenges that we have is the RTFM side. I mean, as an IT pro, one of the reasons I got into IT is because I was really good at sitting down at a computer and just figuring it out. I didn't have to read the manual. Well, that's not going to work here. We're going to have to use and read and comprehend the manual, and they've made it really easy for us. So let's start doing a little get help stuff. First of all, and guys, some of this stuff is in the slides, and so we're just going to demonstrate it. First of all, let's talk about... Um, update help versus the way that we used to have it. Yeah, okay, so we used to ship the help uh, with the product. And uh, it turned out that, that was, there were all sorts of problems with that. So basically the way Microsoft works, uh, because we ship to hundreds of millions of people, right, um, it really matters that the release is buttoned up, right, which is to say that you stop changing things and then you test and you test and you test and you test and then you release it. So what ended up happening was um, that just as soon as you're like finishing, putting the finishing bits on the, the code, the documentation has to be done. And, and, of course, that doesn't work, uh, but now it's cooked. Like, hey, don't change it because you might break something. So then it gets shipped, and, and the documentation, there's differences between the documentation and the, and the product. And the answer used to be, well, you know, hey, just hang in there. You know, we'll release again in three years, and we'll fix that. Well, that's kind of a crummy answer. And then there was a second problem. The second problem is, guess what? The help is huge. Right, because there's a ton of it. Um, and then would you say, well, uh, geez, I'm now going to a cloud world where I've got a gazillion machines, I've got a gazillion servers. I want, want to, to use those, be as efficient as possible with those servers. And you don't need the help on all those servers, right? right. You need the help on the machine you're managing them from. Right. And to put the help on all those systems is just low, you know, bogging down those servers with stuff that you're not going to use. So because of those two problems in Windows, or sorry, in PowerShell version 3, we move to an updatable help model, which is to say we ship and there's some very uh, kind of like structural help that yeah. we generate based upon metadata. You'll see some examples of that. Um, but then all the help text is available from download from, from the internet. So that's the way that works. And, and, and let me just say that in V2, one of the challenges was if you were using the help system and there's an example in there, there was a possibility, you know, that maybe that example was wrong. And I'll show you a way around that if you're in V2. Um, to get the latest information for it. But really the joy here with V3 is, is as soon as Microsoft updates a help or they find an issue, my help gets updated on my management station. So the first thing that we're going to do, and then we're going to take a break here in just well, a couple minutes. Can I minutes. give an example? Oh, yeah. So I don't know if you ever used WQL. Yeah. Okay, right. So I can never remember WQL. Mm. I just can't. It's one of those things. One of those, <laughs> there's certain things that just never sink in for me. WQL is one of them. And so constantly, whenever I went to use that, I'd have to do search. And there's something about the search, co the content, I can never find it on the internet either. Right? And so at some point, somebody had this exactly the same problem. So they went in the, on Microsoft Connect and said, you ought to have an about topic for, for WQL. And guess what? They went and wrote one. And so now we have an about WQL and it's just there. Point was, you didn't have to wait for another release. You had a problem. You told us about your problem. And we responded. And then in a matter of like, well, I forget how long that one took. But there was one where somebody complained about an error in the documentation. Two days later, we had an update. So this is pretty, pretty peppy. It's continuous publishing. And so what you want to make sure that you're doing is you're updating help. And let me show you how to do that. First of all, you're going to need an internet connection. Now, there is a way around that, but let's just start off with the basic update help here. And so we've got a commandlet for that called update as update, get it, <laughs> dash. <laughs> what would you have? Help. What would you want to update? Yeah, what do you want to update? 
the help. So <laughs> the verb, the noun. So that's working out. And I like to use dash force. And guys, this is something that you can run every single day to make sure you have the latest and greatest help. And what it's going to do, it's going to go out to the internet and it's going to download all of the help files that you need for all of the stuff that you have on your system. See that progress bar? It says, ooh. Which is what it should say in PowerShell. Ooh. So cool. <laughs> now, look, if you have a, seri a bunch of machines that don't have direct access to the internet, you can save this help with save help. help. Um, <laughs> you can save this help and figuring then it out. As, as a set of files, and then you can update from that set of files. But uh, having the internet connection sure does make your life a lot easier. Now, here's the idea. We're going to take a break here. And so what we want to do is make sure that you've got a PowerShell console up and make sure that you've updated help because when we come back, we're going to start using my favorite things. And let me just show them to you real quick. Get dash help, which, yep, that's going to get us help on stuff, but it's also going to help us search for stuff. And so that's its yeah. most important thing. Before, though, we go, I want to show you there's a difference. You're going to see people use get dash help. You're going to see people use help, and you're going to see people use man. And I want to show you that there's a difference between these two. Mm. Get dash help. And I'm just going to pick a commandlet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep things real simple right now. And I want you to notice my screen. It's scrolled all the way to the bottom. Now, this is not a complete help file, but we'll get to that after break. But I want you to notice it's scrolled all the way down to the bottom. Now, watch the difference between using help on the same thing. Look at the bottom of my screen. See how I've got that little more, so I can, and you probably heard that, I can space bar now and, and move through the help file. Man does the same thing. So man, and I'll do get service, gives you that same, you know, like you pipe to more kind of deal, uh, where you can pound your way through it. Use whichever one makes you happiest. And probably today you should experiment. I know I've got friends that are just help. I always only use help. I happen to be a get-help kind of guy, because I like it to scroll to the bottom of the screen. The help system is this super discoverable, great tool to help me find things. And, and let's do a couple of examples. I'll start off, and then you, you can join in. Ooh, Guys, ooh. this is, this is going to be really awesome. Because, and don't memorize or write down anything that we do. Yep. I swear to God, don't do it, because... That's kind of the whole point. So let me give you an example. First of all, help has the ability to discover stuff. And I'm, gonna, I'm a get help, get dash help kind of guy. So I'm going to use get dash help. And I want to find out, here's, here's, my, here's my, I want to see if there's any commandlets that could help me work with services. So I'm going to do star service star. Yeah, by the way, star is your friend. Star is a wild card and it says find anything at the beginning or find anything at the end. Match anything at the beginning or the end. Yeah, and make sure that when you mean wild card, you use a wild card because some commandlets will let you not use the wild card and that's not a good practice to get into. So, oh my gosh, look at all of these commandlets. So many commandlets that have service in them. Whoa, but now's where the fun begins. Look, is there a commandlet that in this list that looks like it might retrieve or, I don't know, get me a list of services on my computer? So, yeah. There happens to be one right here. See, get dash service. It would probably get me a list of services. Oh, but, show them the up arrow. Oh, oh show, show them the up arrow. Up, what am See, I doing? You, just, you, I, you can just use the up arrow. Now I, watch this. Now use the right arrow. Uh, the right, right, left arrow, left, left arrow, arrow. And put a G in front of the star. Check this out. Now do it. Oh, got oh. a short list. These wild oh, cards see, are great. The, the wild cards are great. And actually knowing how to do a good search is really good. This, <laughs> oh, this is great. This is great. So... Here's the idea, and we're going to do this a couple times. The idea is you search for, and probably by noun, you search for the thing that you want to find. I want to know something about processes, or I want to know something about services, which are the examples I'm going to use a lot. But it could be as simple as AD computers or something like that. And you search for what you want, and when you find it, well, there's a help file for it. So let's go in and take a look. I'm going to do get help, get dash service. Now this is the simple view of the help file and let me just show this to you real quick. It gives you the name, synopsis, um, syntax, which we're going to talk about here shortly, gives you a description of what the commandlet does and some related links and information. Now this is not the full help, so don't panic. We're going to do the, the, the full help. But let's try this discovery thing again. I want to do, uh, let's see, get help and I want to find 
something that would, hold on, I'm going to use your trick. I'm going to say that would uh, G star, mm, something with AD computer in it. Because I want to, I want to work with Active Directory computers. Oh, look, there's there's a command there. Get AD computer. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking in my head that's probably going to solve my problem. But to be sure, what I'm going to do is, is do get help, get AD computer, and take a look at it. And again, this is the uh, simple help view, and we'll get to a, a better ones here in just a second. But so the concept is, is pretty simple. What you want to do is you want to discover what you want to work with and then look at the help for what you want to work with. Now, the concept is simple, but doing this seems to be a, lot of, a big challenge for a lot of folks. I, you have to become trusting in that this is how we do it and this actually works. No matter what product you're working with, think of what is it that you want to do something to? What, what's the noun that you want to find? And then have help search for it. Yep. Sounds like a great way to get help to work for it. Yeah, we very much tried to create a world where you could think about what you want, type it, and get it. Okay? So let's just say you wanted to assign something. Well, you'd look for a sign and you wouldn't find that. And you'd then quickly learn that we use the word set. And so you'd say, well, okay, so there's an infinite number of nouns, but the verbs are pretty regular. So imagine you wanted to get the help on the verbs. Like, yeah. You type, you type, who are... Uh, go ahead. Okay, so what you do is you'd say, you'd say, get oh, verb. And it shows you all the verbs. And so these are all the verbs that you, you, you're going to learn. And you see, uh, well, how many are there? So you might want to say, well, I'd get the verb. I'd like to measure them. And you see that there are 98 verbs. And here you see we break them up into, into you know, um, whether they're security verbs or communication verbs, et cetera. Anyway, so those, you're going to learn those 98 things, and then, and then you're going to be able to think, type, and get what you want. And what, what happens often is you're not even going to learn all 98 of those. You're just going to learn a few of them because you'll know that what the verbs will do for you, and you end up looking for the nouns. So it becomes a very easy process to follow through. But let's start getting into what this help can do for us. So once again, I'm going to do this. Get help. I want to find commandlets that'll uh, retrieve me some services. Now, notice, well, there's get service, and so I want to take a look at what this can do for me. So I'm going to do get help and get service. Again, this is the simplified help view, but there's more to help than just this. Once you've updated help, this help can be extended or expanded upon. And let me show you a couple of things. This is where it gets, oh, just so happy for me. Um, <laughs> because, watch, I'm going to do get help on get service, but we have a parameter that will allow us to get detailed, ooh, detailed help. And here's what detailed help is going to show us. I'm going to scroll all the way back to the top. And get service gives you the synopsis. Again, the syntax, which we're going to talk about in a second, and the description. This is what we saw before. But here's this. When we talk about syntax, we're going to start talking about what these things are, parameters. These parameters change how the commandlet acts. Well, I don't necessarily know what these things mean. Well, when you go to detailed help, look, the parameters are listed here with an explanation of what they mean. And so what you'll do is you'll actually be up here looking and going, I have no idea what that is. And then you can just scroll down and get a definition of the parameters. Also, as I scroll down here, I want you to notice something really interesting. Now we start to get examples. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. I've got a commandlet called get-service. So let's think about what it's probably going to do. I haven't run it yet. It's good, probably going to give me, and if I read the description, a list of all of the services on my computer, whether they're running, stopped, or paused. And it'll tell me about that. How many examples of that do you really think we need? Well, we need 11 of them. And here's, <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's why I want to point this out. We, apparently, we need 11 examples of this, and there's a reason for this. Because the people that worked so hard on these help files knew that there were going to be all kinds of different ways that you're going to want to try to use this, and they wanted to give you examples. What happens is this is oftentimes you'll be thinking of a business problem or trying to solve a business problem, and you'll say, gee whiz, let me go, I found the commandlet, let me go look at the example. You'll find an example 
that is really close to probably exactly what you wanted to do, which is one of the cool things. So a big shout out to all the folks that work on. You know, the other thing we did was there were a few of the ones we knew people were going to use a lot, like get process. Boy, you always want to spend time looking at get process. Um, because there what we did was we said, hey, uh, get process, get service. People are going to use these a lot. And so in our help and our examples, we show you not just how to use get process and get service, but we also show you some very common PowerShell techniques that then help you, you know, kind of lead you to the next step. You start off saying, oh, I'd like to get something, get services, what do I want to do? And then you say, well, geez, actually I'd like to format it a little differently or I'd like to find these things, filter. And right. so we use those high volume topics to kind of go a little bit deeper to teach you the next level of PowerShell. Which is, you're gonna, as we take you through learning all of this deep level part of PowerShell, you're going to look at these help files in a totally new way. And you'll see that examples of sorting and filtering and getting the kinds of information that you want and changing the kinds of information you want. A lot of times writing the examples. I, a lot of people, the first thing they do is they go to examples. As a matter of fact, there is, rather than detailed, you have a parameter called examples that will take you right into just the examples if you want to get there real quick. Something else that you can do... And this is going to become a big deal this afternoon as we work through this. There's also full help. I don't know, Jeffrey. I don't know if they can handle the full help. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's an awful lot Let's of Let's stress test them. That's, that's, here we go. <laughs> full help. Put now, your seatbelts on. <laughs> put your seatbelts on. Um, full help. Guys, I, I'm going to tell you right now, the full help is very similar to detailed, except when you're in the parameters, there's some special information, and this is going to make in the next section when we're going to talk about what this information means to you. It's actually very important to us, and this will help us understand how the commands work in the pipeline. And so we're going to talk about that stuff in a little bit. So right now, when you're running Get Help, you can use Detailed or you can use Examples, but a little bit later on, you'll always end up using Full. Now, I, want, I promised you earlier that for the, you folks that are running PowerShell V2, and even if you're running v3, um, sometimes if you're running v2, your help files, they're not up to date and you want the latest, uh, I need the latest and greatest information. Well, you can't run update help if you're in v2, which is why on your admin box you should be running v3. However, let me just show you, this is how we used to get around that. Microsoft helped us with this, dash online. I love this, dash online. Look at what it just did. It takes me, opens up a browser and takes me out. Look, updated, shows you when it was last updated. And here's the full help for whatever it is that I was looking for. In this case, get service. So again, don't close that. I'll lose the chat. Dash online. Huh. Now, I Can have I show to, my favorite? Yeah, because yeah, I, I hope you do. Now, this I okay. was confused by this at first, but go ahead. By what? Well, yeah, I'll show you. You go. Okay, so let's swap to mine. So here we'll do get, get help, help, get service. So here's the thing. You can say examples, right? Examples. And they say, oh, that's cool. Let's, let's, let's run this. Let's, 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 uh, let's do one of these, okay? And you type that. And by the way, so you do, you do enter and then left mouse button. And okay, great. Now you want to do the next one. Oh, well. So you see, uh, the workflow is all messed up. So what you can do is you can say, get help minus show, show window. And look here, comes up in a window. Okay, and now this has all sorts of great stuff. One of these is settings. And you can say, hey, I want to just see, I don't want to see all this stuff. I just want to see the examples. Look at all the stuff you can have control I know, over. It's, it's amazing to me. <laughs> so now you just go here, cut, paste. Ooh, ooh, sorry, paste. And do that. And then the next one, cut, paste. And so it's a very nice workflow, much nicer workflow. Yeah. So again, that is this, this show window. And you'll see there's some really fun stuff with Show Window. Can I spend some more time on Show yeah, Window? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now let's turn all this back on there. Okay, so you see it's got lots of stuff here. Okay, so now in the Show Window, you can do things like, remember I said, what is it? Uh, well, anyway, you've got to find here, right? So you can find stuff like dependent, depend. 
Okay, and so notice it gets highlighted, highlighted and it says yeah. here, it says, whoo, 18 matches. Okay, and and it, you can search. I don't, I don't do that very well. Anyway, so then you can start searching for these things, and so it's it's super nice. I, and I think the addition of this, this was added to V3, and I think the addition of this is really phenomenal. Because, guys, let me show you. Um, traditionally, um, you're going to spend so much time in the help file, and you're going to want to do just that. You're going to want to cut and paste from a help file, or you're going to want to read a help file while you're working in PowerShell. That a lot of times, what a lot of guys would do is, if you take a look at my screen, I'm going to, well, yeah, I'm just going to launch two PowerShell sessions. Now, if you have two monitors, mm. this is great, right? So you, you do help in one and then you can work in another one. But with V3, having the show window stuff, well, first of all, it fits better on your screen. It's easier to move around. You can have the help. It's easier to get stuff out. The part that always confuses me is, and then we're gonna fix this later when we start talking about the magical ISE, but it's, it's, the, it's the cut and the paste, man. It's that whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's that right clicking and stuff in the console. Why can't we fix that? Why can't we fix that? Why can't we fix that, that, that console? Because <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, so okay, anyway, that's so. the answer I want. <laughs> <laughs> no, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. So it, it, let me give you a little tutorial about some of the behind the scenes stuff at Microsoft. So there was some point where people said, oh, you know, Microsoft stopped uh, uh, advancing IE. You know, oh, that just proves what bad guys they are. There's no competition. They stopped innovating. No, 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 my friends. Honestly, that's not what happened. What happened was, um, was that it got to the point where every time we made a change, uh, we broke a bunch of people, right? Right. And so then it's like, well, people are like, hey, jerks, stop breaking us. And so, and so they stopped doing that. And then all of a sudden some competitors got up there. And so now they went and started doing things even though sometimes things break. Same thing happens with the console window. The console window, man, every time you change that thing, you break tons of people. <laughs> you just break tons yeah. of them. And so you don't want to change that thing very much. Now here's the thing. Actually, I'm pretty hostile to the console window. Okay, so that's it. I'm trying to make this thing die. I'll just be straight up about it. Make it why die. And why is that? And the answer is that there are these things called console apps. Okay, now a console app only works in the console. Now here's why I, I, I want to kill the console because I want to kill console apps. And it turns out that the reason I want to kill console apps is you go and you write, you do something on the console app, and it writes directly onto the console, which means you cannot automate it. Okay, you can't run something, get its output, process the output, and do something with it because it writes directly on the screen. So this is just evil incarnate. It is the enemy of automation. So we're trying to get rid of those things. So we're trying to uh, get everybody onto PowerShell ISE, which is a right. much richer investment. So by the way, stop asking me to fix the console. I'm not going to fix the console. And, and that's the point that I, I want to, is that the console, and look, I know cut and pasting in the console, and some guys will go, the console is driving me nuts. A little bit later on today, we're going to help you with well, he hates it, and so there's actually a really cool solution to it, but I want you to wait till we get there with the ISC. Um, so to cut and paste in the console is, if you haven't done it, yep, it's you highlight it, you right-click, and then you can right-click again. So no Control-C, no Control-V in this puppy. I think we may have something cooler for you later on, but right now... That's how you do it. So right click and right click will take care of it for you. Jeffrey, you know what we need to do? Um, we need to start to take a look at and explaining syntax. Because yep. here's yep. the thing. Everybody wants to work with uh, commandlet. But, you know, commandlet's going to do great stuff for you. But sometimes you want the commandlet to alter its output or change what it's actually doing for you. You know, get service is great, but it's going to give you a list of all your services. I, maybe I just want the one called bits or something like that. So the syntax of the commandlet will explain to you the options that you have available to control the commandlet. And so at first it looks very, very confusing. Now we've got slides for this and so it's all in the slide deck, but let's take a look here. I've got get service up right now and I'm gonna take a look at something pretty simple. But you know what, you know, if you oh. do this in show window, it comes out better. You like it in show window better? Yeah, because watch, do it. Oh, you, oh. No, you do it. Let's see. Let's do show window. See, because one, you get the zoom there, down at the bottom. Did you, you didn't notice that? 
Oh, see that yeah, 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 yeah. So, oh, that's and see, very, And very so the nice, nice thing is that it highlights some things. So it's a little, I think it's a little uh, bit easier to read. Very easy to and read. And it's easier to select and say. Okay, so we're gonna something. use we're gonna use this instead. This is much better. So take a look at this right here. See the thing with the dash in front of it? So you'll notice that I've got a commandlet. And then it starts followed by all of this magical characters. And we're going to explain what all these characters are. But the first thing I want you to notice is, is look how many times under syntax I see the name of this command line. I see it three times. Now, Jeffrey, technically this is called parameter sets. But parameter what this, sets. What, 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 why am I seeing three of these? Yeah, so here's the thing. Imagine, uh, take a look at uh, the net command. Right? There's net use and net view, et cetera. These are different parameter sets. And what happens is when you type net view, you get one set of functionality. When you type net use, you get a different set of functionality. So what happens is that, that then uh, they reuse the word, the command net. Now, that's essentially what a parameter set is. Now, we take a different take on it. Net use is extremely different functionality than net use, okay? So we don't like right. that. We want to, to be clear. But the point about get service is that there are different parameter sets. Sometimes you want to say get service based upon its name. Or you're going to say I want to get service based upon its display name. Okay? So those are two different parameter sets. Or a better example would be get process. Sometimes you want to say get process whose name is this. Sometimes you want to say get process whose ID, ID is, is this. Or sometimes you're going to just say get process and get them all. And get them all. Yeah, so and those are different parameter sets. And let me show you what, what Jeffrey's talking about. Is notice in these three different get services, and yeah, don't worry, we'll take a look at get process too. In these three different get services, look at this one. This one has dash name. Down here in these other two, you don't see dash name. This one has dash display name. You don't see that in the other two. So that's what makes that particular parameter set unique. And matter of fact, I'm going to demonstrate these here in just a second. but Again, look at these dashes. These dashes indicate that they're parameters. Dashes, parameters. Parameters will allow you to change the results of what the command is going to do. And I want to do an example for you. Let's take a look at dash name. I want you to notice it's followed by these characters here. I just kind of go like this, call them chihuahuas or something like this. Chihuahuas? Ch that, no, that's the technical term. Is it's, it? <laughs> not many people knew that. Exactly. I, I didn't realize that you... Uh, the official okay. technical term now is chihuahuas. Um, and what this is, is this is the kind of values that you can give this... I think this we're going to get in trouble with HR on that one. Really? Okay, these things. Uh, well, no, it, it, like Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Ah, Pac-Man. So these can, can be... No, no. <laughs> these are the values that you can give to the parameter. And I'm going to show you. So let me, let me give you a quick example here. Let me lower this down. Well, I'm not going to lower it down. I'll just do it here. Watch. I'm going to do get service, and I'm going to use one of the parameters. Now, parameters always begin with a dash. So make sure you always put a dash in front of the parameters. And now I'm going to put in a value that would be inside those chihuahuas. And it said that the value type was string, which means alphanumeric. And I'm going to put in the name, or, which is a short name, of a service. I'm going to do bits. Instead of getting the entire service list, this parameter now is going to allow me to just get the service that I want. So here's the idea. Parameters can have these arguments on them. And a lot of parameters can take multiple arguments. And let me show you what that looked like. Let's say I wanted two services. Notice the comma in between. Now the space is optional, but see, if you put a space in there, it makes it easier to read. Now I get those two. Let me show you how that looks in the syntax. And so let's go back here. Notice up here at dash name, that's the parameter. Then we have the chihuahuas with the type of data that we can put in there, the value type. See these guys inside? These guys? And they've got to be doing close together because we've got these guys and we've got these guys. So these guys. chihuahuas. What are these? So chihuahuas, I just call them binkies because they're binkies. inside. Yeah. So yeah. you've got chihuahuas. And inside the chihuahuas, you have these binkies. If you see binkies in there, that means it can take multiple values separated by a comma. Now, I'll show you some stuff later where you won't see the internal binky. And so, and it, boy, there's going to be a whole phrase book now. Um, and so it can only take one value. And this is very important for you to be able to know. But here's the part where it starts to get a little confusing. Let me do uh, 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 a little demonstration here of dash name with multiple values, which I just did. But let me show you something else. This isn't the confusing part. I'm going to ask Jeffrey about this confusing part. Again, you can do wild cards. 
So dash name B star means I'm going to get all the services listed that begin with B. By the way, there's no conflict between wildcards and arrays or collections. So do this. Do that up arrow. Now do, oop, now comma C star. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is, oh, yeah, that's a great so, point. Yeah. Great point. So, so now I get both the ones that begin with Bs and with Cs. And see, that's awesome. That's totally awesome. So, oh, I closed my show window. So let me go up here and open up the show window. Here's the part where I start getting kind of confused here. And it, this, this originally kind of threw me off is I want you guys to notice this guy down here, computer name. And I want you to notice what's around computer name. See these brackets that surround both the parameter and the argument there? So it's not the internal binkies inside of Chihuahua's, it's these things that surround either the parameter or the parameter and its argument. This means you don't have to use it. It's optional. But wait, we're not done yet. Um, a great example is, is take a look at this first syntax, this uh, uh, syntax up here. Notice that everything has these around it, which means that there's nothing actually required that I type in. Notice I've got them around here, got them around here, and every single one of them, optional. That means all I need to do, or all I have to do, is type get service, and it gives me a whole list. In other words, no parameters were required. But, take a look at this, inside the syntax. Look at this second syntax. I want you to notice, look at this guy down here. See how display name doesn't have these around it? Well, that means if you're going to use display name, you, you've got to put it in, and then you've got to give me a value for it. Now, here's an example. Display name, by the way, is the long name. So it's this really long name. And I can get services by that display name, but I want you to notice that You've got a choice, dash name or dash display name. So get service, dash display name. And now I can type in whatever long, lengthy, and I'm just making it up, display name that I want to type in. But if you're going to use display name, now you have to use display name and the value that goes with it. That's what gets you into that other syntax. Let's do something else. Let's do stop. Oh, wait, you didn't. Oh, you didn't oh. Yeah, so here's the thing. Yeah. So imagine you wanted to get, like, uh, do a get service B star. Just V star? B, B. Oh, B, B star. B boy. Okay, so look at this. The name for BitLocker Drive Encryption Service <laughs> yeah. is B D E S V. Now remember, we said, oh, well, you want to create a world where you think about what you want, you type it, and you get it. How many of you are thinking, oh, I want to get the B-D-E-S-V-C <laughs> service, right? Like, blah. So, no, you want BitLocker, okay? So then you want to say, okay, well, get service minus display. Bit no, you can't type BitLocker. It's BitLocker Drive Encryption Service. So, what? So remember, PowerShell's great because I'm flawed. I can't remember B. D E S V C, and I'm definitely not going to remember BitLocker Drive Encryption Service. And look, even if I could remember it, I can guarantee you I cannot. I'm like incapable of typing that correctly. So, what you do is you type display name bit star. No, just bit. Oh, just bit star, yeah. Bit star. Something to do with BitLocker. Yeah. But doom, and it just Don't, works. It got us by the long name, which actually makes more human sense than those little tiny short names. See, this, one of the things we said was, with PowerShell, it's like programming with, with uh, hand grenades. <laughs> versus sniper rifles, you know? Okay. It's just sort, of, just sort of like over there. I don't know if I ever oh. told you that story. No. My, my buddy, I, I, out of college, I, I, uh, uh, my roommate, used to be in Vietnam. He was Vietnam 18 Special Forces. And no, it was actually the other guy I worked with. He was a Navy SEAL. And the Navy SEALs get their own weapons, right? So right. everybody else, like you're this kind of guy, you get this kind of weapon. The Navy SEALs, like the, the, the gun manufacturers would make them guns. And he talked about this thing. I never quite got it in focus, but it's basically sort of like a machine gun shotgun. A machine shotgun. And he said, and the great thing about that was, is in Vietnam, you, know, you had the, the jungle, and you sort of only had to know what, like, was my problem over there or over there? <laughs> and you'd set up with this thing, 
And he says, you'd let loose with it, and three seconds later, your problem was gone, or everything between you and your problem was gone. Was gone. <laughs> you could focus in on your problem. Well, that's the same sort of thing. You just sort of like, hey, bit locker, uh, it's something to do with bit locker, bit star. Bit star. And so that's the kind of the model we're trying to go for, is you know, just sort of over here or sort of over there. Now, there are times when you need to be precise, and you can be precise, and there are times where it's just sort of like over there is good enough. And by the way, uh, when you need both, uh, you'll see how we deal with that so through something called minus what if and minus confirm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, uh, and, and Jeffrey, what I need you to help me with is this is the um, this is the one that seems to throw most people off. So a dash dun, 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 means that you have a parameter, and if it's followed by chihuahuas, that means you can put arguments on it, and you get the value type of the argument, string, and that kind of thing. And if it's got binkies in there, you can take multiple arguments separated by a comma. You see plenty of examples of us doing that. And if you're surrounded by these brackets, I, you don't have to, it's optional. You don't have to do it at all. But, but there's something tricky here in this view. Yeah, is that cool? Let's look at this guy. Look at this dash name. This guy throws everybody off. So I've, it, it, I don't have to type this in. I don't type anything in because we all know that I can just run get service and get all of them. But... If I'm using dash name and I want to specify a name of a service, like bits, what is it with these little duders inside here? Yeah, this is something we call positional parameters. Okay, And so that means that uh, if you just specify the value, uh, you don't have to specify dash name. So, so this makes so. Watch, get service. I can do this. You might be saying, oh, i, I, I got to type a lot. Actually, you don't have to type a lot, but here's what positional means. If you're going to give me a bunch of names of services, you don't have to use dash name. See? Works the same way. Which means, so those brackets around the parameter simply mean you don't have to use the parameter. But you got to give me the argument. That's what makes it Oh, positional. and it gets even better. Because now you can just type GSV. Oh, yeah. You bits. can use the alias to even alias. shorten it up even further. So watch. Only, yeah. Or do you, do you want to go ahead no, and do, go ahead it? And do it? Is it GSV bits. bits? And so here's kind of a, a key kind of principle of PowerShell. Okay, the principle is we want to have this very regular, very uh, uh, self-describing surface. Okay, so when it's three o'clock in the morning and things didn't go the way you wanted to, and uh, during some IT upgrade, and you bring <laughs> up some script. You want that script to be absolutely readable. You want to know what's going on, okay? And so that's why PowerShell is very clear. You know, get dash service dash name, etc. So that when you're reading it, you know exactly what's going on. On the other hand, when you're uh, interactive, uh, you can type that if you want. We make it easier to type that with things like tab completion. But sometimes you just want to go, 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 go. And so we have all these uh, uh, shortcuts and aliases so that you can be very, very productive as a high-speed, advanced, interactive user. Uh, but then when you go and write scripts, we encourage the more verbose style. As a matter of fact, let's, uh, just to emphasize on that a little bit further, um, so when you're writing scripts, this is the way that you're going to want to do it here in the top example. You're going to want to be very uh, explanatory of what you're doing. But as Jeffrey was saying, when you're at the console, free reign. I mean, if you can use aliases and shorten this up with the positional parameters so that you can quickly get things done. You're going to see examples of that today because Jeffrey uses an awful lot of aliases and I usually, because I'm getting ready to automate it, sometimes I just do the whole thing the first time through where I use all the parameters and all the arguments. So you're going to see that contrast between working quickly interactively with the short, uh, you know, short versions and then the long versions that you're going to want to see in a script. But let me give you a hint and then we'll do another example and, and then take a look at how to work with all of this. Um, um, I, have you guys been hitting the tab key? You take your pinky, take your pinky. If you're a touch typist, this is, this is probably not for you, but this pinky oh, should... Oh, he's showing you the official flexing moves. Yeah, this yeah. you want to make sure you up. stretch. You want to warm it up at stretch the beginning it. of every day. Stretch it, stretch the pinky. And you want this pinky to hover right over the tab key, always. Because what you want to do is, watch, get S-E... I'm going to start hitting the tab key. Look, 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 look. It'll start going through the commandlets. We got so many commandlets now, it's a lot of them to go through. Uh, there we go. Wait a minute. Shift tab goes backwards. Watch. Dash. I'm going to hit the tab key. It'll cycle through the parameters for me. This is, oh, this is cool. Remember I said we make it easier to help type this stuff out? That's what yeah. he's talking about. And so, look, in just about as many keystrokes as doing like GSV uh, bits, 
just a couple of more and I can bang this out and get it to look really nice and clean so that if I'm going to use this in a script. So the tab key is your friend. Use the tab key. You're going to see us use it all the time today. Let me show you another example of finding something as kind of a summary here of, of finding a, a, a commandlet and then taking a look at its syntax. And then we're going to show you how to start to put commandlets together on the pipeline. So let's do this. I have this business problem, business problem time. And my business problem is I need to get, um, I need some errors. I need the, I need the newest errors, the newest five errors um, out of my system log. Oh, yeah. So I need to be able to look at my event the log logs. The log file. Yeah, the log file. Yeah. So I'm thinking I need to look at my event logs. I wonder if PowerShell has a commandlet that can help me with my event logs. So get help star, well, let's see. Do you have anything with event logs? Oh, and lo and behold, there are plenty. As a matter of fact, this is a great time. Now you can take a look at the verbs. You can just guess what. What do you think clear event logs going to do? What I do bet you it would clear it. I, I, I bet it would clear it too. You know, what do you think get event log is going to do? Ta-da! It's going to. I know it seems ridiculous, but this is the point: is you're looking at the verbs and figuring out what they're going to do, and it's not that difficult at this point. Now what we're going to do is I want to get an event log. Now I could just try to run this, but I want to take a look at the help file first. So I'm going to do get help on get event log. And I want to take a look at the syntax. And I also, if I have questions about the parameters, I want to be able to see the definitions of those parameters. So I'm going to do dash detailed right now. And I'm going to go up here and go, hey, here's get event log. Um, take a look at the syntax. Look, get event log. Look at all of these parameters. See the dashes? See the arguments that they can have, whether they can have multiple values. And if you don't know what something is, like, hmm, I wonder what newest means, you can scroll down and you can take a look down here. And the reason I'm going through this is, this is what we all ha end up doing, is I don't know necessarily what all the parameters mean. So a lot of times I go to the list and I read the list of parameters first just to find out what capabilities I have. I know that seems like it may take a few extra minutes, but it's worth it because I found that newest means I can get the newest entries in the log. But to also take a look at something else in this syntax. Oops, where'd he go? Look at all of the things that are optional, but I want you to notice something. Looking up here, I want you to notice that dash log name isn't required, but this guy is. I want you to see what happens when something is mandatory and you try to run it. So if I just tried to run get event log, I want you to think about this. If this worked just like this, think about all of the, it's going to go through all of the logs and spit all of the logs out onto my screen. Could that be a little performance issue, especially if you're doing it to 50 machines at once? That's now called big data. <laughs> That's right. Big data is the big, big, big data. data. Uh, <laughs> um, so watch. I'm going to strike enter and PowerShell smart enough to go, hey, look, you need to know what log you want to look in. So we're going to make you tell us what log. Um, so I'm going to say system. Now, of course, it's now going to give me the entire system log. But let me just show you. By using the help file, looking at the examples, reading the parameters, you can start to make solutions like this. Get event log, I know once a log name. I want the log name system. I also know that I want Wait, the newest. I think you can tab complete that too. I think you can now too. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let's try it. Didn't used to be able to do that. Let's see. Oh, uh -huh. look. It's, is that cool? That is totally cool. I noticed that a lot in V3 that you can now tab complete on a lot of the things that the system has. I think yeah. that another reason you should be using V3. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. That's a V3-ism, not on V2-ism. Yeah. So I, I know that by looking at the help file, the newest will let me get the newest, I'm just going to say three entries. But here's the thing. You guys know this in a log file. There's a lot of that information stuff, and I don't want that. It just so happens if you look at the help file, you'll find that entry type error, that's going to give me the three latest errors. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's not, you know, that's cool, but, you know, I had to do a lot of reading. I could have just opened up, you know, the graphical for this. Oh, yeah? Well, watch this. Thing is this. There's a parameter in here called computer name. I want the latest three errors from three different computers. Um, here's the thing I, 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 you, you need to kind of get from all of this. You can't open the graphical fast enough. 
more or less get that data that quick. So in this one command that I figured out, I can get errors from multiple computers all on my display. Now, it's on my display, and we're going to fix that here in this next section because maybe I don't want it on my display. Maybe I want it, I don't know, in a web page Ooh. or a CSV or something like that. But <laughs> They missed the look. Show that again. Ooh, a web page. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I turned to Jeffrey and go, ooh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I've used the help file to build one great command, and now we want to start doing more with it. So kind of wrap this up here. I've got some slides in here. And, and like I said, everything that we've been doing is, is in the slide deck. So let me just kind of thumb through here the slides. Again, questions? Well, by the way, you missed something oh. crucial. Did I? Yeah. What did go I back miss? To, go back to that, uh, the wild card help. Go, interactive. Interactive. Would you, which, oh, which? good lord. Here, go to mine. What? What? He said, get help, help, star, event log. Okay. And pointed out, oh, look here, you got clear, you got get, limit. But look here, about. Oh, I forgot to talk about the about help. Yeah, no, this is like one of the most important things, this about event logs, okay? So these are what we call conceptual topics, okay? So you say, okay, clear screen, and then, by the way, here's a trick I do, right? So if I did clear screen, here's the thing. So now I want to see this. If I do clear screen, and then, oh, what was it I was going to do? Oh, shoot. So what you do? <laughs> All right, because again, I'm flawed, right? I can't remember. It was about something. Okay, so here, so what you do is you do clear screen and then semicolon. Semicolon is a statement separator that says do this and then do something else. So it's a way to do two things at once. Then we say get, well, let's just say help about event, well, by the way, tab return, event go. logs. So then it clears the screen and shows me the about. And so here, notice it gives me a short description, describes things, viewing the event logs, goes through the, dis the, the discussion about the topic, tells you about the commands, et cetera. And so there's quite a bit here. And then, clear screen, if you just say help about underscore star. Yeah, that's, there you go. You'll see lots of about topics. I mean, look at them. There's a, and there's just a ton of really good stuff here, like wild cards. Hey, about wildcard. Oh, about wildcards, about PowerShell version 4, guess which one I'm using, about the ISC, <laughs> about WMI, and there's the one I mentioned, remember? Remember? About WQL. Well, yeah. so, so I got to tell you, this is one of the best investments you can make is to go and do this help about and spend some time reading them. I mean, there's really great, great stuff there. Yeah, and I think, I think the, the, the important side to this is that there's actually two help systems. The help, the help will help you discover out of both of them. You've got help system for the commandlets, and then you have this about underscore help system, which, as Jeffrey just said, is uh, conceptual stuff. As we go through today, we're going to be pointing out, oh, yeah, you need more information. Go to the about underscore blah, 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 blah. And oh, there'll no, be there's more, more information in it. No, there's more than that. What's more than that? Oh, so you don't know about category. Category? Yeah. So get help <laughs> minus category. And here, here's a trick, right? So you say... Um, I know that category takes a value, but I don't know what value it is, right? And so sometimes we have to have completion, sometimes we don't. Here's what I have to do. I just like give a bad value, and then often what it'll do is <laughs> it'll tell you, you tell look, what it categories? Says, the argument, blah, 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 does not belong to the set, and it tells you the set of things that you can type. Oh, so you okay. can get specifically for like the yeah. providers that we're yeah. going to be talking about? That's the about. key. Now, and I'll the... tell you here, we, we did this and set this up, and we had quite ambitious things for the help subsystem, and we haven't fully implemented all of them. Some of our partners have implemented some of them, but we didn't. But, like we were going to have FAQs and glossary terms. So, so if oh, you say yeah. help FAQ, it's not there. Okay, like to get around to that. But in particular, notice here, it says, where it is, where it is provider. Right? So what you can do is you can say, by the way, tab there you works. Go. <laughs> and it tells you, oh, look, here are the various providers. Now, we're going to talk about this topic later. Right. Uh, but if you did that and you said, oh, get help uh, certificate, certificate, certificate. <laughs> It'll give you information about a provider. And when we get to the topic about providers, this will make more sense. But it's a very, very rich help system. Yeah, very rich help system.